come from a, a long line of uh, a rugby rugby internationals, you know, and dad playing uh, the Tonga and the whole family. I think for giving the name, rugby was always going to be the first first in uh, the first choice sport. Uh, growing up in Australia, I think uh, rugby leagues is is. Uh, one of the main sports over there. I think uh, we us started off. Uh, me and my brother started off playing rugby league, and um, we only made the change to rugby union. You know, the two years into it, just uh, because of our religious commitments. You know, we weren't allowed to play on uh, on uh, on Sunday. So Dad got us into rugby union and um, a little, maybe a bit of boxing. A bit of boxing. <laughs> Making the transition back in uh, 2011 to come over here and play in the Northern Hemisphere, um, I always made it a personal goal to play in the Premiership. Um, it's something that you know I, I was working towards, you know, and uh, I started off in the Pro 12, ended up in the Championship, played a little bit of Pro D2, and then finally got this opportunity to come here and play in the Premiership. I think it's a, it's a massive achievement for myself, especially with one of the biggest clubs in Europe, not only Europe but in the UK as well, you know. And, uh, I think uh, it's somewhere where I think I can excel as a as a player, individually and collectively as well. And it's a it's a club that I could uh, uh, and a competition as well that you know I could I could really offer a lot. You know, and uh, waiting for the opportunity now I have it. You know, I think it's something that I really want to do well in and uh, give it my all. Um, greatest achievement to. To date, you know, that holds a special place in my heart is uh, playing for Fiji, uh, putting on that jersey for the first time back in 2010 against uh, against Australia. And one of the greatest moments of my my career as well is uh, is uh, on debut against my older brother. The strange strangest feeling uh, back in 2010 was uh, actually packing down against. So let's two different nations, both on debut. Him being my brother, I think it was just quite, you know, quite strange. There was a lot of emotions in it, but um, at the end of the day, you know, we, we both knew we had a job to do. You know, I obviously representing Fiji here, representing the, the, the Wallabies. You know, I think we both uh, wanted to 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 do well. You know, and wanted to do the best we can, put everything aside, and wanted to just go out there and perform to the best of our abilities and do well for. For our nation, it holds a it holds a history mark in our family as well, you know. And um, I don't think anyone's ever done that. Yeah, no regrets, no regrets. Uh, I think um, tiny little little things like uh, you know, I thought where I could have made something of myself in the start when I first started my career in rugby is in Australia. You know, I would have loved to to, to try and uh, come through one of the Super 15 franchises and whatnot, but. You know, there's little things like that. You know, that's that's uh, that's the little uh, the little regrets that make you. You know, that give you that extra edge to want to keep doing well and perform to the best you can. I definitely have to be uh, Richie McCaw. Uh, a pre-World uh, World Cup game back in 2011. Uh, saw Fiji come up against the All Blacks. And uh, Richie McCall was uh, was uh, the captain then, and I think I was uh, quite starstruck to be honest, of coming up against one of the best in the world. And and uh, they came out they came out on top, you know. And uh, Richie, Richie Richie that game was uh, phenomenal. He was just carried his team, he carried himself well, and put in uh, one hell of a shift. I'd like to say I got another World Cup in me. You know, uh, 31 for for front rows is quite young, uh, as, as any front row would say. You know, they say you only reach your peak when you hit your 30s. You know, your early 30s. So yeah, I'd like I'd like to see you know one or maybe two more World Cups in me, but um, it's a long shot and it's uh, it's something that you know, take day by day. You know, and, uh, I see myself you know settling back in in Australia. You know, it's uh, it's home for me. Born and, born and raised in Australia, somewhere where you know I think uh, I'll, I'll definitely settle after the 
my little family and yeah, carry on life. You know, Fiji Sevens have always been known for for that area of the sport, you know, and um, I think that there's a lot of expectations, you know, on them. You know, they have a lot of uh, a lot of expectations going for themselves, you know. The nation, they, the nation relies on them, and all the supporters worldwide relies on them, you know. You know, they've, a lot of teams are coming through, and they're all they're all uh, pushing to stake a claim, you know. Come Olympic time, but, um, come Rio. So uh, I think Fiji, Fiji will come through in the end, you know, and um, one thing that Fiji Sevens have always been renowned for is, you know, they're pulling the magic out of the bag. They always say they're the best for last, you know, and it's 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 uh, it's, uh, it's massive expectations for them, you know, but um, I think they'll come through. I think I'll, uh, if, uh, I'll be very surprised if they don't make the, the final stages or if they don't win the medal. A lot of it, a lot of it did come to come down to, to Francois Ludicky, you know, behind the scenes, uh, doing a lot of work with our lineouts. But uh, a lot of credit does go to the uh, old guy in the back, in the background as well. Not a, not a lot of people know that he's actually a part of the Fiji rugby team. Is uh, Alan Miller, as known as uh, Grumpy, is uh, the old guy from New Zealand, and uh, he actually was in charge of the scrums, you know, going into the World Cup, and he had a pretty tough task uh, going into the World Cup, you know, and they, they just threw it all on him and said, this is what we've got, you know, and um, this is what we need to do and this is who we've got to play. Given the small time we had preparations uh, heading into the World Cup, you know, uh, we had uh, we had a lot of work, to, we knew there was a lot of work to be done, um, we, came to, we came together well. To be honest, uh, Francois Ludicky had uh, put in uh, several hours, you know, in, in lineouts. With, uh, with boys that play at the highest level and never been line out generals before and Grumpy, you know, he, he came through and he made us scrum, you know, I think something that's never been done in the history of Fiji Rugby is, is a scrummaging session five days a week, you know, and Grumpy came through with that with us, you know, and he, he said, you know, it's, it's, it's something that we, you know, um, we really, really, really need to work on, you know, and when you come up against these tier one nations, it's something that they'll attack us on, so... Uh, I think the realization for us was to to, to, to get our scrum on, on the map. You know, and, uh, a lot of these teams had a good reputation for their scrummaging, but us as a, as a nation, in, in, as you said, you know, have never been renowned for scrummaging. It's something we wanted to, to change. It's something that we worked hard on as well, together as a team, you know, as a squad, and um, all the coaches putting in several hours, you know, to see us, you know, put in the hard work and week in week out, or something that we. That, uh, that we that we reaped, you know, and um, we came out in the end and um, ended up being uh, ranked in the top five, you know, stats-wise uh, for 100% success rate on our feeds and our scrums, you know, and that's something Fiji has never achieved ever. Um, quite, quite, quite the achievement for us as a, as a front row, as a pack as well, you know. It's all the work comes down to 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 everything that we put put on the on the line. Thirty thirty seconds, thirty seconds scrum against the Wallabies is, uh, is very. I don't really remember most of it to be honest. Um, I just remember getting up and uh, seeing that we got on top. You know, we got we got the penalty in the end. But uh, yeah, it was it was. I just remember going into that scrum, telling uh, telling uh, my uh, my uh, teammates, you know, like Manasa, I said to him, like, "This is our scrum, so yeah, you know, we take it as a pack. We take one scrum at a time. You know, we don't try to." I think two scrums ahead or one scrum behind, you know, we just try to take it every scrum by one by one, you know, and it's, it's, it's uh, yeah, really satisfying to see us, you know, all the hard work pay off, you know, and um, mental toughness prevailed for us in the end, you know, we, we, held, we held the ground, we held our ground for a full 30 seconds and it's, uh, it's something that we'll, we'll most definitely be proud of. I think uh, one of our biggest challenges is producing, you know, uh, quality players. You know, it's, the one thing we don't have is, uh, is depth. You know, and I'm not just saying depth in the backs. You know, we, as you know yourself, you know, Fiji hold a lot of depth in, in, in the backs. You know, and we, we're always every year they're always producing, you know, a, a, a quality backline player who's bound to go on and become one of the world's best. You know, 
But I think we don't have what well, we don't have depth in is, is in the is in the forwards, you know, and, uh, particularly the front row. There's a there's a quite there's quite a few young guys coming through the ranks, you know, coming through the system at the moment, and uh, they all potentially could you know could, could do a job in the white jersey, you know. But uh, there's one guy that stood out for me as well. He's current current uh, flying Fijian himself. You know, there's a loose head prop. Penny Rabbi plays for Nandra and Nasta Lens back in Fiji and uh, he's someone that, that I think, you know, he's, he's me personally, I think he's the next best thing for Fiji, Fiji rugby, you know, in, in, in the scrums as well, you know, it's, it's very rare that you see a prop represent their country in sevens, you know, and, and this guy not only he's represented Fiji, Fiji sevens, you know, they're you know, one of the best teams in the world, but front row as well playing at the at that level as well is is quite uh impressive. The last time we faced England in the uh, the opening World Cup game, you know, um, they they actually came out and put a little roll over, you know, and it's it's a game where we will always, you know, um, will hold, you know, one nil. We took uh, we took it to them in the set piece, you know, and we the scrums, you know, uh, is something that we really, really did well in, in that game and it's something that they were criticised quite heavily for, you know, coming out of the game saying, you know, that we went up to, went up to, for the challenge, you know, that, that Fiji put on the, on the table, but uh, definitely they, they, they're going to want to come out, you know, this uh, this autumn and they're going to they're gonna put their best team forward and they're going to want to get one back, you know, and they're going to want to shut us up and, and, and let the world know, you know, that Fiji it was just a fluke, you know, around that World Cup time. But uh, looking forward towards that game, you know, I think we just need to stay composed, you know, and say and just keep consistency uh, built, you know, throughout the system that we have, have in place for that game. You know, I played with a few of the English boys as well. You know, they they, they say you know uh, it's going to be a massive game for them. They're going to want to get this one back on up. Space and time and the tries. I think, I think the good thing for the good thing about Fiji rugby, you know, we're always uh, renowned as the underdogs, and it's something that we strive on.